Hello, welcome to this week's reading vlog and today for this week the first book that I'm reading is The Ivies by Alexa Dunn. This is a YA murder mystery thriller and so far I'm enjoying it a lot. It's definitely very complex. There's a lot of elements in the story so far which I am very much enjoying. This is about The Ivies which is a five girl group that are Essentially, they're, they're five girls who are willing to do whatever it takes to get into the Ivy League school. That's why they're called Ivies. And in this story, one of the five friends dies and or gets murdered. And so there's a lot of like questions on who did it, why it happened, and there were some obviously some circumstances around that. We are following Olivia, one of the girls. This is her perspective. We're following her perspective. And so far, there's a lot of like really great elements because they're all friends. Olivia is the only one that's poor, that is not like rich like the rest of the girls. Uh, Avery is their leader and she pretty much is the leader of the pack and uh, there's just a lot of secrets being revealed right now and a lot of secrets and mysteries and questions being brought up and yeah it's really interesting because each of the girls have different kind of levels of viciousness when it comes to taking down their opponents and getting what they want. And Olivia, you could tell right from the beginning, she's the least vicious because for one, she doesn't have the resources to, you know, blackmail, to bribe, whatever. She's smart, but she really works hard for that. But she says, but even she admits that she's not the smartest um, person and she was even surprised to be part of the Ivies. So that's also one of the questions that I have because based from her, she is in a way the least useful in the group because they all kind of help each other achieve their goals because they all, and Avery has assigned each of them a different school. Her school was supposed to be Penn, but she's always wanted to go to Harvard. Avery's school is Harvard. So they all help each other get rid of the competition to, you know, have the most qualifications to get into Ivy League schools and in a way she's the least helpful because again she doesn't have the resources she's not the smartest so again that's a question of why did they choose her to be part of the group when there are other girls who could easily fit in much better than Olivia so that's you know that's the thing that recently has just come up and again they all have different motives in a way they all have different goals and even though they are f they're not actually like friends friends you know because I don't think any of them really were close enough to each other although I do have some kind of theories maybe on what happened and again obviously you know secrets coming up questions and mysteries that we have to solve and everyone is suspicious so yeah I'm really enjoying it so far so I finished the Ivies and I really like this one. with this being a mystery thriller usually I would love following and finding out the mystery in here but what I ended up really loving are the characters the Ivies but I especially really liked Olivia our main protagonist I love following her because she is part of this Ivies and even though she starts discovering just how far the girls will go and what she has done does not compare to what they have done. She still isn't innocent going in. And even though she sometimes kind of plays the victim card, she doesn't do it all the time and she doesn't like really milk it. She knows what she's done and she knows that she can be vicious as well, but not the same as the other girls, which makes it so interesting. Like, them being like a whole group of friends, they're not really friends because they're never really close, but because they all will do a lot of things to get to the schools that they want, it's really interesting to see, to read that dynamic. And although I didn't, like I had a few guesses onto who did the murder and you know, the overall like motive and stuff, I didn't really fully guess it until, you know, it wasn't revealed. But again, more than the mystery, it was really the girls and our main protagonist that I really loved. These girls, there's a reason why they want they want to be in Ivy League and there's a reason why they can be in the Ivy League schools. They're really smart and they're cutthroat, they're vicious, and I love that about them. And I love how they're portrayed as not shallow. They're not shallow. They might have like shallow tendencies and shallow motivations and all, all of that, but there's so much more than that. They are smart. They, they, they're, they're all like, they can all get into these ivy schools. It's just very competitive. But again, I love the portrayal of the teenagers here because they may be teenagers, but they're not dumb. They are not shallow and their motivations are not something you'd roll your eyes 
about. You can definitely tell that there's that they are very, very smart outside of being book smart. They're very they they they're manipulative, they're coercive. That's why I loved reading about the things that they've done and finding out the things that they've done and how just how sometimes minimal the things that they do are but end up end up having like a really large impact on their goals. So they they don't have to sabotage or do a lot of really big things to get what they want, to have those credentials, to get rid of competition. They only have to do something very minor because that's how smart they are. They only need to talk and, and they're very subtle. They're discreet. So sometimes if you're the victim, sometimes you overthink it and like I, I I don't think they will do it this way or they will do it that way or maybe I'm overthinking it because it's such a small detail, such a small thing that you don't really think that that's what they manipulate for you to be out of the way, you know? So I really love learning about all the things that they did. It's I don't ever condone it obviously, but it's so fascinating because these teenagers, they're really they're not shallow and dumb and You'd roll your eyes about them. There were a few dialogues that were kind of like, do teenagers really talk up, talk like that? I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm I mean, I'm already 25. These these girls are 17, 18, so you know they were they're seven, eight years younger than I am. So again, I really enjoy this one. I love the portrayal of the different characters. Usually with YAs, I would find that some of the girls are just it's a little bit too dramatic or a little bit too shallow, like their motivations. But for this one. Mm, I really like this. I really like the characters here, and I also really liked the plot and where it went. And oh, I really liked it. It's very morally gray, and it's very it's in the whole the entire group is morally gray. And I really also really like the ending, especially the last chapter, the very last chapter with Olivia talking to someone about what had happened. I really like how that ended, and I loved how that she feels guilty for what she's done, but she. She knows that for her goals, she has to do those things. So the next one that I'm gonna be reading is Rada and Jay's Recipe for Romance. I have it over there. So okay, it, that one is YA romance, contemporary romance. So it's gonna be very light. Hi. So quick update. I am halfway through Rada and Jay's Recipe for Romance, and I'm really liking it so far. I love our main leads because they're like. They're kind of opposites, but they have this love for dancing, but also they're not, in terms of personality, one isn't like super rude or can be super rude or super mean. One is just like, Jay is just like a sunshine, like he's just, he's super friendly with everybody, but, but he's also like an overachiever, like he's, he's probably their valedictorian. I forgot what the term is called, but he's pretty much a shoot in for that. And he's like super talented. He's super nice. And then we have Rada, who is like this queen of pep tuck dancing. And she's pretty aloof. And not because she's, you know, not nice, but she's just, she's not used to getting friends because she used to have this really rigorous, intense training with her dancing. And so she never really had time to like socialize and be friends with anybody so she's not used to it i've always had this really strict routine so the she's you know she's very reserved very used to having and sticking to her routines while jay's more carefree and extroverted so i really like the dynamic but i also really like how rada is really standing up to her mom it's very easy to get used to especially if you have a parent that's you know very much invested in what you're doing like in her case with her dancing it's very easy to have a very strange relationship with her mom with her want with that parent and wanting to always please that parent and not being able to stand up for herself because you're never used to but she's very smart she has this agreement with her mom and she has it in writing because she knew that her mom could manipulate her and change like that verbal agreement that they have She's very smart like that and she doesn't back down even though she loves her mom still and she still loves dancing but she has to find her footing again after the betrayal that happened to her and I just really feel so much for Ada but she's she's just I love following her because even though she went through such a really crappy thing she's staying strong and she's fighting for herself too so I really like that and JJ I just I love him too he's he's such a 
great son to his family that he's willing to give up his future so that he doesn't inconvenience or doesn't hurt his family and keep on helping his family <sighs> they're both they're just i mean they're, they're, they have their faults especially like with the halfway at the halfway mark with jay specifically but yeah i'm really enjoying this so far and it's making me crave all the food because it's mixed in with with her with rada jo learning how to cook all right so quick update i finished rada and jay's earlier today and very cute it was but i but i think more than that i really loved our main characters because they're both very smart very talented teenagers that are still trying to figure out themselves and what they want to do and if they are willing to really fight for it i really love that so and i also like all the food getting mentioned i i got very hungry reading this one and then so i finished that right i picked this up ten of vipers finally i've been wanting to read this one but i know this is going to be like a very very dark very smutty <laughs> book so yeah this is this is adult we went from super cute innocent super fluffy romance to very dark very smutty adult i'm only 40 pages exactly 40 pages in and like immediately from the first chapter the guy is this is reverse harem by the way so one female protagonist four male protagonists so the four male protagonists in the very beginning were talking to the love interest's dad dad sold her off to pay his debt great dad by the way and ooh, it was very dark already like they were torturing him they were hurting him and mm. and we're really following each of the characters perspective so i'm really looking forward to that mm. <laughs> again it's already very dark i've already like had to like really kind of realign myself at the beginning because i was like oh this is a lot darker than i thought <laughs> it really is dark so yeah <laughs> also this is very long this is 600 pages that's why it's thick thick like yeah so that's what i'm reading right now it literally can stand on its own it's a paperback <laughs> yeah that's what i'm reading right now i'll update you guys what when something happens i mean already a lot of things have happened in for first 40 pages so also i really like the female character so far she's very badass like not not like oh yeah she's she's pretty snarky and can stand up for herself it's like she literally beat up four guys in like the second chapter so so I haven't really read that far in <laughs> the last time up I updated, but one thing that I will say about this so far is that the writing feels a little disjointed. Like it doesn't flow as well as you would expect or as, as well as other books. It doesn't flow very well and she definitely has like a favorite way of writing certain things. Like it's you can see it in the blur with the back or like the summary of the back for example the vipers i'm going to make them regret the day they took me this girl she bites too she has a few of those like she has a question and then in that format and then in like in each chapter she has that kind of thing that i notice and again yeah it's like the writing and i think i've seen a few typos already that's just me being like really nitpicky but yeah, i can't really because i think this is like an indie published so she doesn't have um like editors and like a lot of proofreaders so yeah you know that's what i'm seeing so far all right so quick update i'm oh i'm sitting my face around 150 pages left so i'm gonna finish this tonight so far it's been just the same for me it's just i appreciate how dark it really got because that's really what this is it's like a really super dark reverse harem romance very adult very spicy but in terms of the writing there's just a lot of things like same thing you know it just doesn't flow very well overall she has this writing style that she really likes and she uses a lot <laughs> there are just some like really cringy parts in here like the things that they say to her and the things that she says it just kind of feels a little bit cringy like it doesn't match overall feeling of the book so it just kind of takes me out whenever they say those things so yeah <laughs> i mean i'm still gonna finish it because i'm still kind of interested in like their whole dynamic so i still i want to read where we're gonna go because especially with where i am right now in the book um as expected you know there's like a very big conflict regarding her and it's predictably her <laughs> getting kidnapped by their you know by the enemy here the spicy stuff yeah they're very spicy very creative too so yes i will update you when i finish it so i finished it i was really struggling in the last hundred 
pages, it was just dragging. Like, it could have ended with a hundred less pages, I think. So, didn't need to be 600 pages long, <laughs> honestly. There was no plot in the last 200 pages, honestly. So, it could have been condensed in, I don't know, 30 pages? 20? <laughs> I want to say I had pretty high expectations. And I didn't really... It w- <laughs> yeah, I thought it was going to be more well-written. I thought it was going to have like really good plot. Although, it's really is just a spicy book like it's it's just smut and even the morning glory milking form was better than this one and that one's like 200 300 less than 300 pages long i literally read the entire thing in two hours but that one's way better than this because i really appreciated the relationship that the two people had even though it is also a very spicy book it's mostly spice and this one is i mean it's reverse harem and although i did like the characters just entire it, t- it keeps taking me out of the story because of the writing. I couldn't even appreciate the smut because of the other things. So, I may as well finish it. <laughs> so, I will be going to the library tomorrow to pick up more books because I don't have any more books to read. And I have 11 more days for this month and I cannot not read anything. So, yeah, I will be going to the library early tomorrow. Last update for this week. I went to the library earlier today and i have three books three library books that i'm going to be reading for next i was going to finish honey girl today but i don't know i was tired and i think i had way too much sugar that i crashed <laughs> and i had a few things to do in the morning anyway so i'm 170 pages in more than a little bit halfway through so far i'm okay i like grace she subscribed as a virgo i'm a virgo myself too and i get the having plans and sticking to plans, having a routine, having goals and achieving those goals, etc. And I also understand the pressure that she has from her father who wants her to take something else, but she decides to... She kind of did what I did (laughs) in college. My parents, even though they've always said that they wanted me to do whatever I wanted, there was that pressure to be a doctor or um, be a nurse or like an, a lawyer, an accountant, an ID, you know, those really high-paying professional jobs. It's pretty unsaid, but how they would say things or like throw away comments about, you know, being a doctor, etc. Like just yesterday, my dad was asking about my classmates and I told them that they've, like my batchmates in university, majority of them have graduated medicine. And he said, you could have been a doctor now too. It's like one of those throwaway comments where they do want me to take those things, but they never want to directly pressure me. So what I did is to take psychology, even though it's not directly tied to medicine, it's also a prerequisite to medicine. A lot of my friends, again, took psychology and then went to med school. I didn't, but it's like the closest thing I could get. And it was the closest thing that I was actually interested in too. So it's not physician kind of doctor. But I could be a doctor if I wanted to. It's still in that like similar, still in that similar kind of um, area, I guess, or like it's close enough. And I did this, I did that same thing because even though I don't want to be a doctor, I sort of want to be a disappointment. So I want to do something that I actually do enjoy, even though it's not what I want to do. Although for Grace, she is very much interested. She, that is what she wants to do. But she, then she starts questioning. Already twenty nine, she has her PhD, but things are just not falling into place like she expected and like what you know she thought will be after all the plans that she's had for years and so she you know she goes to las vegas and gets drunk married to this girl and so i understand that her struggles with that and you know with expectations from especially her dad and wanting to do what is right and all that i understand yuki I feel like even though we're we're already halfway through, I feel like we're not really learning about her, we're not really getting to know her. It's very surface level or it's still getting to know kind of stage. So I just I, I need a little bit more um to get into this story, but I definitely love the friendships that Grace and Yuki have. They have really great friendship as a for- support system in their fr- in her in their friends. So that's my very last update. I think I had a very good um, reading week as well. A lot of fun earlier this week. But a Vipers was. It was a ride and I kind of wish I didn't read it. It's kind of a FOMO read anyway. So I can't like regret it because... Read it because I didn't want to... Like because of the fear of missing out. So you know. 
because I did that to myself. So I'll see you next week. Next is going to be my birthday week and we do have plans. Well, my birthday falls in the middle of the week and I don't want to celebrate in the middle of the week, in the middle of like doing it. I want to really enjoy it. So we will be celebrating on the Saturday. I can't believe I'm turning 25. Okay. I... Anyway, <laughs> that's it for this week. I will see you guys next week.